Let us all stand and sing our opening song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We give back all the glory and honor to you. Lord of lords, King of kings, this world is yours, planned in eternity, created in a moment of sheer exuberance, permeated with love well made. Father, we worship you for you are the creator and sustainer of all. We praise you for letting us see the beauty of following Jesus. We adore you for all the mighty works of your hands that reveal your unconditional love, kindness, goodness, and mercy. With bended knees, we come before thy holy presence 
with our hearts completely immersed in prayer of adoration. Father, as your children here today, confess their sins, humble their hearts, make their thoughts white and pure as snow. And Father, please hear out these confessions as they give this unto you. Father God in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to listen to your words. Thank you for sending Pastor Dan to share the good news about the beauty of following Jesus. Thank you for using AUP Academy as an instrument to know how much you love us through your Son, Jesus Christ. And now, dear Heavenly Father, please listen to our individual thanksgiving. Father, we continue to ask for your divine presence. Please abide in us through your Holy Spirit, and may you guide us to accept your word. Thank you for the assurance that you will answer our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray.
What a very powerful message in song. How could you say no to this man? How could you say no to Jesus? And I like what she say that Jesus is here with his open arm. And when you see him with your heart, how can you say no to Jesus? I praise God for the talent of music that you have here. And I praise him for all that you're doing, playing violin and instruments and I'm so amazed at how God has blessed you and this morning is very special because Jesus wants to speak to us again and he wants us to behold to experience the beauty of following him and yesterday we saw uh, the beauty of following Jesus letting God fulfill his purpose in our life and we saw the life of David and his sacred that we should read our Bibles every day pray every day and we will grow and and grow and in the afternoon we look at Joseph and we saw that God has put a dream in your life and one way of letting this dream be fulfilled is by striving by God's grace to live a faithful life. And this morning we have another subject. I entitled it, Finishing Well. Finishing Well. I want you to raise your Bibles again with me this morning. Let me see if you brought your Bibles with you. Just raise your Bible high. Okay, good, good. The Bible 
is a divine word of God. If we read it and believe it, we shall receive it and alive. Now open your Bibles with me and come to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 and 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 to 8. I'll be reading for you. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all AUPA students who love the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, thank you. They want to speak to us this morning to help us to know how to finish well in Jesus. So open our hearts and our mind. Let me be receptive to your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. A story is told of a man who made an agreement with death. He said, death, I want to ask you a favor. Please never come to me and take me without warning me. If in any case you want to take me, please send me a warning first so I can prepare myself to die. So death said, all right, I'm going to warn you before I come. And the years passed by and the man forgot uh, his agreement with death and he lived, he enjoyed life. One day he became sick and he was rushed to the hospital and taken the ICU. And he received some visitors. And one morning somebody knocked on the door and it was Mr. Death. And when the man saw Death, he shouted and said, Death, you promised that you would warn me before coming. Now you have come to me without warning. And the man, death, replied and said, hey, come on. I have sent you many warnings. Do you remember when you had a headache? That was a warning that I'm about to come. Do you remember when you had backache? That was a warning, I'm on my way, I'm about to come. Do you remember when you were taken to the hospital? That was a warning that I'm about to come. Do you remember every day that passed by, it was a warning that I am coming so soon and now it is time for us to go. Many times we live and plan for tomorrow as if we had a guarantee that we'll be alive by tomorrow, even in the next few seconds. Just this month I'm thinking about many people who have perished in the northern part of Luzon. You have read about landslides. You have read about typhoons and calamities that take people unprepared. They sleep and they don't know what will happen in the night and a landslide happens and they didn't even expect it. And suddenly, death comes. What would you do if you would know that you will die this afternoon. Or maybe somebody will let you know that you will die tomorrow. When we spend our lives studying in class, we are prepared by our teachers how to face the future, how to live in this world. But there is no subject, if I may think so, that teaches us specifically how to die. 
Students, this morning we are going to learn on the subject how to die. We learn how to live, but we never learn how to die. And maybe this could be the reason why many of us are not prepared to face death. We even don't want to talk about death. I remember during my college, in my dorm, we had worship every morning. Now, students didn't like to come to the worship hall. They had a choice. You can come and worship every five o'clock, or you can be absent and pay. So this was a dorm of rich students. So they had money they would rather pay than come to worship in the morning. One day at four o'clock, something happened just before the worship bell could ring. There came a very strong earthquake that shook the whole dormitory. I remember I had students shout from all over the dormitory shouting, Patai, 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 screaming. They were so afraid and other students got hold of their laptops. Others jumped off the beds and they were so afraid. Right at five o'clock, all the students rushed to the worship hall. For the first time, the worship hall was completely full. And they were all singing before students come to worship hall and they sleep. But this time, when they came because they knew they were about to die, they were singing, we are marching to Zion. And they were singing enthusiastically. Wow, I watched and I said, Lord, thank you for the earthquake. It is a nice wake up bell. And, and we said, Lord, can you bring earthquake every morning so we will not sleep in the worship hall, so we'll be awakened all the time, praising you, knowing this might be our last time. But because we think we have tomorrow and tomorrow, so we can relax. But death comes to us unexpected. And that's why this morning I want to discuss on a subject Finishing well, because I believe that for each one of us, there is a finish line somewhere. But the problem is, we walk every day. I don't know when I will reach my finish line. And therefore, this calls me to be prepared all the time that death might approach. There was a time, let me have the PowerPoint there. There was a time in history when Christians were persecuted, let me have the PowerPoint, thank you. When Christians were persecuted and accepting Jesus was not something easy, they were killed because they said, I have decided to follow Jesus. And pagans, they used this moment as an entertainment moment. All who followed Jesus. They were gathered and they were put in Colosseums. And then pagans would gather there for entertainment and they would watch Christians die for their faith. And every time Christians would die, the pagans would shout and they felt so entertained. But there was something about these Christians. They knew how to die. Look at this. children who die in the name of Jesus. I say to you that this day you shall be with him in paradise. Here where Nero rules today, Christ shall rule forever. 
Who is that man? I think he is their leader, a man called Peter. He escaped us before. But he said Christ would replace me. What sort of... They're singing. even in death. The lions will sing louder, I think. There was something amazing about this. That as Christians died, the pagans were so afraid of death. But in the midst of the entertainment, they were amazed. How come Christians are about to die, but they can sing? Number one fear of pagans was death. Because for them, death was the end. And so when pagans died, they would write on their graves, goodbye forever and ever. There was no hope beyond the grave. But when Christians died, they would write on their graves, goodbye until we meet again. Goodbye until tomorrow morning. So when the pagans saw the Christians die singing, they came to them and said, what is your secret? How come you know how to die? For us, we are so afraid of death. How come you die singing and praising God? And this was a time that Christians preached the gospel. And they say we're not afraid of death. Because at one time in our lives, we stood and said, I have decided to follow Jesus. And so even when I die, but when my life is in Jesus, the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 4.16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the sound, with a trumpet, with the call of an archangel and the trumpet call of God. And those who died in Jesus, the Bible says, they will rise up first. So it does not matter how I have lived, but it matters how I have finished. As long as I die believing in Jesus, that is not the end. Someday when Jesus comes, he will call my name from the grave and I will come to meet him in the air. That's why Christians were not afraid of death. And then history says, many pagans became Christians. Why? They wanted to die well. They wanted to finish in Jesus. They wanted to enjoy the beauty of following Jesus that I have no fear of death. When I was a young boy, I told you yesterday, this was my business, and I sold Okai Okai for four years. 
and it, it was a good business. Then we would take our okai okai to the mountains with my friends doing that business. But one day, as we went to the mountains, we went on old trucks. We would put our okai okai inside the trucks and we would sit on top. And the trucks were so old, so as we went up on the mountains, it was not easy until one day there was an accident. The truck that was ahead of us, it overturned and some of our friends lost their lives. Others, their legs were broken. It was a very uh, big accident. And that night, I remember as I stood and listened to messages for some of our friends who had died, I began thinking about life. Seeing my friend lying in a casket, and I thought, of course, I, I, I would be the one lying in there. And I thought about life, and I thought, if I had died, what would they say about me? Of course, they would say, this guy who died, he was a professional okay, okay seller. And I said, Lord, wow, this is not good. That's all he did and written on his grave. Not goodbye until we meet again, no. Goodbye, okay, okay, seller. And I cried, I said, Lord, since I am still alive, I want to change that writing on my grave. I don't want on my grave to be written, okay, okay, seller, no. I want on my grave to be written, goodbye, missionary of Jesus. See you tomorrow morning. So I went to my papa, say, papa, I don't want to sell okay, okay anymore. He said, why? I said, papa, I don't want to die selling okay, okay. He said, what do you want to do? I want to be a missionary. He said, oh, really? You will become poor. You will have no money. And I said, Lord, it's, papa, it's okay. As long as I die as a missionary, I will die well because I will not die in okay, okay business. I will die in the business of Jesus Christ. And I was serious. So I left Uganda and I came to the Philippines. I came here to be a missionary. I joined 1000 Missionary Movement. And when I stepped in the campus, I was so happy as I began visiting house and giving Bible studies. And after our training, they were reading where we'll be assigned. Now we were praying, why? Most missionaries don't want to be assigned in the mountains because it's so hectic walking up and down always. So we are praying, Lord, please assign me near SM so that when I'm tired, I can go and enjoy some air-conditioned place. But they read my name and said, Dan, you have been assigned in Mindanao, in a place just near Malawi City. And I didn't know what, that was, what it was all about, but my friend came to me and said, Dan, you have been assigned near Malawi City. I am so sorry. You are going to die within one week. I said, why? He said, you are going to be kidnapped there in Malawi City. And I said, this was not encouraging. He's my fellow missionary, but he's carrying me with death. And he was also assigned in Kenya, just near my country. I also went to him and I said, brother, you're also going to die. In Kenya, you'll be killed by mosquitoes, malaria also, within one week. In Mindanao, I'll be killed and kidnapped. You'll be kidnapped by mosquitoes in my country. But then we will realize, even those who are going to America, they would also might be shot or, or bombed. There were challenges everywhere. But as we came together, we were not afraid. We smiled and sang and prayed because we knew now, even if we die, we will not die in anybody's business. We will die in the business of Jesus Christ. And so I said, Lord, now I'm ready to die for I am in the line of duty. But there was another man in the Bible. His name, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul, let me have a slide. Before he died, he spent time to write his own epitaph. And he, he was about to be beheaded. He looked back and he looked ahead and he realized he had no more time ahead. Then he mentioned these words and said, I have fought a good fight. I have 
finished the race. I have kept the faith. Looking back in his life, Apostle Paul realized he went through so many challenges, but he kept going forward. And he was saying, I have lived a disciplined life. Despite of the many challenges, I never stopped following Jesus. And he said, I didn't follow what I wanted to do, what pleased me. I follow what Jesus wanted me to do. That's why he wrote somewhere, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Jesus lives in me. So following Jesus is like moving in a land with landmine. You've got to be careful where you step because there, there is so much landmine. But what you do, you let somebody go ahead of you so that where he steps, that is safe. You step there also. When he steps there and he's still alive, you step there also. But if he steps somewhere and dies, then now you are warned. That is a dangerous place. That's why Jesus says, when you follow me, I show you the way how to go. And he leads you all the way that you can say with Apostle Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. This was the assurance that Apostle Paul has. That I have a crown of righteousness. He was dying. He should have been crying and feeling sad. But I love this, that when I follow Jesus, even when death comes, I am ready to go because I am in the duty of my blessed Lord Jesus Christ. He never stopped running. I remember one time in my college days, I had no money and I wanted to buy a textbook. So I went to my friend and I said, please, can you give me the book and I will pay you later. I didn't have money, but I knew I would get money. So it costed 500 pesos and I got it at Utang. You know what Utang is, right? I mean, uh, it means date I will pay some other time. So after getting the book, one week, two weeks, I have no money. What will I do? And my mind always reminded me, oh, Dan, remember you have Utang, you have Utang. Until one day I heard there will be a marathon. We are going to run. And our school is located on the mountain. So we have to run going from the hill, going down the valley, and coming back up. And when you are the first, you will get 500 pesos. I said, thank you, Lord. This is my time to pay my utang. So I joined, and I tried my best. I had not practiced. But as I joined, I knew I have to win because I have to pay my utang. So when we began running, I went so fast. I looked back and all of them were far. I said, Lord, thank you. My otang is finished now. I'm going to pay. So I went and up down the hill. When I reached down, I had no more strength to go back up. So my man said, Dad, you got to keep running. Why? You have otang. You have to keep going forward. So I turned back. I could not run anymore. So I just tried to, to, to run just very slowly, very slowly. Anyway, I was far. And as I went up the hill, somebody came from behind. He was running very fast. In the beginning, he reserved his strength. And when I looked back, I said, now I am finished. My otang will not be possible. So I kept going. I encouraged myself, otang. Otang, please Lord help me. Otang, I have to pay back. And this encouraged me to keep going forward. Go forward. You have Otang. When my friend came, he reached where I was and he laughed at me. He had so much strength and said, Dan, kaya ka dire, dire ko kaya. I have no more strength. And I asked him, can you please help me? Don't go ahead of me. Why? I have Otang. Please stay at the back. I have, I have to pay 500. And he looked at me and he laughed and said, Dan, I am so sorry. I also have Otang. And he ran ahead. But I didn't give up. I kept on going. Why? 
Because in my mind, I know I have to pay this otang. And I reached anyway. I finished the second and I could pay half. But you need the motivation to keep you going. And Apostle Paul was looking to the day when he received the crown of righteousness. So as he walked, he knew there is a crown for me that Jesus has prepared for me. There are many challenges, but he kept going. There is a crown for me that Jesus has prepared for me. Until the day he was about to die, and he had this blessed assurance, I will receive this crown because Jesus, the righteous judge, will give it to me. And I want to let you know, each one of you has a crown that God has prepared for you. And you've got to move forward in order to receive this crown that he has prepared for you. As you look to the cross of Jesus and see him die for you at the cross, you cannot stand and say, Jesus, it is too hard to follow you. I have been privileged to witness many young people give their lives to Jesus Christ. We were had a week of prayer in Macau and these young people from very rich families and I was amazed as they came forward to give their lives to Jesus. I was amazed to see young people from Bangladesh. These were young people who listened the whole week and at the end, they gave their lives to Jesus. I want to follow Jesus and it was so beautiful to see these young people commit their lives to Jesus. I was so privileged to see young people from Mindanao commit their lives to follow Jesus and they came forward and they decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. And actually one of them is right here. This is uh, Brent. Brent is right here. What is Brent? Can you just wave at the people? Yeah, there is Brent. Yeah, he was one of those who were baptized during this week of prayer. Thank you. And it was amazing to see them and they, they decided to follow Jesus Christ. Beloved friends, as you stand this morning and you look at the cross of Jesus, as he bids you come and follow me, I wonder what should be your answer. I wonder if you have felt him speak to you this whole week and inviting you to come and experience the beauty of following Jesus Christ. And think for a moment and see him dying for you on the cross. Leaving heaven just because of you and, and suffering and living like a poor man. Walking on the dusty streets of Jerusalem and, and, and dying and carrying this cross simply because he cares so much about you and me. And, and as he died on the cross that day, on his mind he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. He wanted you to experience the beauty of following Jesus. There was a time when men built a very big ship called Titanic and they went on that boat and they went to enjoy life. And talented pianists were there playing, playing violin, playing piano. They were playing worldly songs. They were dancing and enjoying until something happened. There was an accident that happened as the ship and those who were playing worldly songs, now they stopped and they began playing Christian songs. Yes, there is a volume there. Could you put the volume in? We can just have an experience of what happened. It is amazing that men who were enjoying, but there came a time when there was no more enjoyment. It is amazing that men who thought they were in comfort and, and on that boat were so many rich people. And, and this movie helps us to, to have a glimpse of what happened really during that time. And rich people have invested a lot just to have entertainment and to enjoy. But when time came and the ship was sinking, there was no more enjoyment, no more entertainment. And for a moment, they thought about their riches and they thought about all that they have invested. And it, it shows that life and everything in it can be meaningless without Jesus. And now we live and we feel no need to give our lives to Jesus. 
But there comes a time when we think now and it is already too late and we, we switch and now we begin calling upon Jesus. But then it might be too late. And they began playing nearer my God to thee. Nearer my God to thee. The band was now playing, playing Christian songs that did not play at first. Beloved friends, there will come a time when all of us will have to repent. There will come a time when you have to stand before Jesus. And that's why this week, he wants you to make a decision and say, Jesus, I want to commit my life to you. And so I can enjoy the beauty of following you. And the Holy Spirit works in many different ways. I don't know how you have felt God speak to you. So I want to make an appeal this morning. You are saying, Father, I am deciding to follow Jesus. I just want you to stand. Now, this is a moment of decision. Let me invite somebody who will sing for us the appeal to be right here near. Now, this is a very serious moment. I want to make some special appeals. Because when Jesus speaks, he is not speaking to entertain you. He is speaking so you can respond to the message. And you want to make that decision, Father, I have decided to follow Jesus. And you're serious about that decision. I just want you to stand. Let me invite somebody who is prepared to sing the appeal song to sing as I make the appeal this morning. May God bless you for standing. May God bless you. And I'm going to pray for you this morning as you make that commitment to follow Jesus. If you're not ready, you can just remain seated. Do not, don't worry. Just if you want to make this commitment, I want you to stand. And may the Lord bless you for the commitment that you have made. And I'm going to make another special appeal this morning. As you listen to the appeal song, I will invite you to spend some moments, close your eyes, and listen to the Holy Spirit. Close your eyes and let God speak to you through the message of this song. As I'll be making a very special appeal to each one of you. I invite you to close your eyes now and just bow your heads and let's spend some moment hearing the Lord speak to us. Maybe you felt God speak to you in a very special way this week and you want to make a special decision in your life. I'm going to open the altar for you and I'm going to have a privilege of praying with you this morning. And you're saying, Father, I want to follow you all the way. I want to be baptized. And you have been thinking about this and you're serious about it. I want to have a privilege of praying with you. And I will ask you just at this moment to just leave your seat wherever you are and come to the front. Dear Jesus, Beyond just following you, I want to be baptized just like you were baptized. And I want to seriously follow in your footsteps. And when you say, Father, I want to be baptized, you're saying, Father, I want you to take full control of my life. And you're there this morning. I want you to open your eyes and come to the front. Let your classmates see you. Let the school see you saying, for me now, I have decided to follow Jesus I want to be baptized like Jesus was baptized and this is your desire I want you to come I want to be baptized I want to follow Jesus I want to invite you to come don't be shy don't be ashamed to come I want to follow Jesus we'll wait for a while Oh, wait for a while. Jesus, I have had you speak to me. I'll ask the rest to just, just close your eyes and bow your heads and pray silently for those who are making decisions. If you have decided, Lord, I want to be baptized, I know there is somebody. We'll wait for you. I want you to come to the front. Come now. Come. Come and I'll pray for you. I want to be baptized. I want to follow Jesus through baptism. Come now. May God bless you. I can see someone coming. May God bless you. 
are making a very wonderful decision in your life. May God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, if you want to come give your life to Jesus, don't be afraid to come. God bless you. Keep on coming. Don't be afraid. Come and give your life to Jesus. I want to follow Jesus through baptism. May God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. You are making a wonderful decision for your life. God bless you. 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 If your friend wants to come and he's shy, you are friend. Help him come to front. May God bless you. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. We'll wait for a while. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. May God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. We'll wait. I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. God bless you. If you want to come, we'll wait. Come. I want to give my life to Jesus. This is your time. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus is here. And he's watching you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. Will I be coming? I praise God for you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. You can make a decision to follow Jesus. These are decisions you will never regret. It will change your life. I want to follow Jesus through baptism. And you want to come. Come, come. Come, God bless you. I'm so happy for you. This moment will change your life, I'm sure. If you want to come, I want to invite you to come. We'll wait for a while. I want to give my life to Jesus through baptism. Now I'm going to pray. But I think there are still some more who want to come. And we'll spend just a, a few more minutes and we'll wait for you. And you want to take this opportunity to come and to give your life to Jesus. I want to give some few more moments. And if your friend is there and he's shy, he's thinking whether to come on, just grab his hand and bring him to the front. This moment will change your life. Let me invite the pianist to play some music for us as you wait for some people to come. Come now. Come. Can you sing for us some more as you wait for people to come? Come now. Come and give your life to Jesus. I'll wait for a while. Maybe you're thinking, we'll wait for a while. Come. Come. Come, we'll wait. We'll wait for you. Come. God bless you. There's some who want to come. We'll wait for a while. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. This moment will change your life by God's grace. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. Come. I'm so happy for you. Thank you for deciding for Jesus. I'm so happy for you. I know it's not easy, but you want to come? Just come. Just come. I want to follow Jesus through baptism. Come now, come. Come. We'll wait for you. I want to give my life to Jesus. There's some who are still coming. Praise God. Praise God. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. We commit May God bless you. Lives to you oh Let me invite all teachers to come and stand with your students here. Let me invite teachers to come and stand with your students. God bless you. God bless you. Let me invite the teachers to come and stand with your students here as they give their life to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you, brother. You want to give your life to Jesus? Who we'll wait? Come now. Come. God bless you. God bless you. I want to enjoy the beauty of following Jesus. I'm so happy for you. Someone want to come. Come, come now. This moment will change your life. We have no more time now. Come now. Come. May God bless you. Come now. Come. Oh, she's coming. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. She come running. Some are still coming. God bless you. 
God bless you, my sister. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. May God bless you. Let me invite the chaplain again to come. We're going to pray together this morning. Let me invite the pianist to keep playing for us. Can we sing some more? Just a little bit more. I'm going to make just a last. Let's appeal. Somebody is still there. I'm going to invite you again to come. Uh, this morning also I want to invite all those who are baptized and you want to renew your commitment with the Lord. I was baptized already, but I want to renew my commitment to God. I felt him speak to me in a very special way. Just come and stand right here. I was baptized already, but I want to renew my commitment to God. Just come and stand right here. I was baptized already, but I want to renew my commitment to God. My walk with God maybe hasn't been very good, but I want to renew my commitment. Just stand right here. I was baptized already, but I want to renew my commitment with God. And I'm going to pray right after this. If you want to be baptized, come up to the stage. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so happy for you. If you want to renew your commitment, just come and stand here. It's a moment of decision and I'll give you time. God bless you. God bless you, friends. I'm so happy for you. God bless you. Just come. I want to renew my commitment. I want to be baptized. Just come to the front. I want to be baptized. Come to the front. I want to renew my commitment. Just stand right here. And we're going to have a special prayer for you. I'm so happy for each one of you. Praise the Lord. I want to be baptized. Come to the front. I want to renew my commitment. Just come, just right here. I am so happy for you. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. May God bless you. I'm so happy for you. Praise the Lord. Deep inside our hearts, we don't have peace in our God. Only if I take up my cross, God bless you. God bless you. We commit our lives to you, O Lord. We will be freer than free. Our hope in Christ is never lost. Only if I take up my cross, we are going to pray after this song. If you still want to come to join this group, come. If you want to join this group, this moment will change your life. For when we Praise are weak, then we are strong. For when we are weak, then we are strong. Let's spend some moment of prayer. We are strong. If you if you can kneel with me you can kneel if you cannot you can stand just just feel free but i will invite you to kneel with me as we pray together we'll ask pastor to pray especially for you and your commitment to god that he will bless you and i will pray for these people are renewing their commitment and i will pray also for those who have stood to commit their lives to jesus christ will you kneel with me if you can and pastor will ask you to pray first Our loving God and Father in heaven, our hearts are filled with happiness and joy, witnessing the decisions of our young people this morning. Father in heaven, here are our students, our children. They who have indicated the decision to commit their lives to you through the waters of baptism. Father in heaven, as the teachers, as their elders, we rejoice, truly their God in heaven, that at this moment in their lives, they have come to realize that they need you. They need 
to start their life the right way by dedicating themselves to you, giving their youth the years before them, Father in heaven, for you, for your service and your glory alone. May you, may you protect them, Father in heaven, from the evil one. Deliver them away from temptations, from the wiles of the tempter, so that by your grace, by your grace, they will be able to maximize, Father in heaven, their potentials, use their talents for your glory. And so, Father in heaven, their parents, we the teachers, this church will be more blessed because they have come this morning to commit their lives to you. Yes. Give their services, their years, their talents, their lives to you for the service of the church, for the finishing of your work. Father in heaven, our hearts also long for many more of our students, hundreds of them perhaps, also kneeling now in the congregation. We know many of them still needs to commit their lives to you. Many are about to graduate from AFA Academy. Father, we are appealing to you in a special way for them. Talk to them, Father in heaven. Let them not delay for a day, for a year, for a week, or for, for more years reasoning that they still have to experience some of the things of this world or that committing their lives to you should be reserved in a later time. Father in heaven, we believe that time for them to commit their lives is now before they pass through the doors of AUP Academy. We ask all these things. We thank you for giving us your grace, your son, the Holy Spirit, your presence for Pastor Dan to be an instrument in the proclamation of your word. Thank you, Father in heaven, for everything in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you once again for this life-changing moment. We thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit working in the lives of these young people. And they have come saying, Father, I want to follow Jesus and we know that the enemy is not happy about this and he will try to make ways to discourage them that's why we commit them in your hands this morning help them to stand by the decision they have made give them strength we commit their lives into your mighty hands we pray for these young people who were baptized that father as they come to renew their commitment you help them Lord to live and walk like Jesus, to be different, to embrace the beauty of following in the footsteps of your son Jesus, that they may be a light that will shine in their classrooms, in their dormitories, on the streets, wherever they are, as they prepare themselves and others for the coming of our Lord Jesus. The others who have remained who have not come but they have stood also they love you and they want to give their lives to you may you bless them father you know their hearts well lord and i commit them to you also that you will bless them and there are those father who have remained seated father also pray for them that you will bless them they are all your children and you know our hearts better than we do i pray that you will continue working in each of our lives I pray for the teachers that you work through them mightily, that they will become instruments in guiding these young ones to the way of righteousness by God's grace. Bless AUP Academy and may this be a center where young people will come and meet Jesus and go out to be his witnesses. Thank you, Father, for the manifestation of your power and presence in this place. Bless us as we continue to feed on your word. Thank you, Father, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. We leave this place believing and trusting in your name. In Jesus' name, may we all say amen. 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 Thank you so much. May God bless you. Uh,
please just just go and sit there. Just go and sit and you have some instructions. Thank you. May God bless you. Please pray for me and I'll keep praying for you. Let us all stand and sing our theme song, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Let us bow down our heads for the word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the message we learned this morning. Um, thank you, Lord, for reminding us to be faithful to you until all times. And Lord, um, as we go back to our classroom, dismiss with your love and maybe be a good example to others. Forgive us, Lord, for the things you committed against thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> 